welcome everyone. Um, I hope my um, voice will stand up to um, talking. I was in Texas earlier this week and came back with a cold. So i um, hoping that it will last out for at least 30 minutes anyhow. So um, what I'm planning to do to begin with is to make some scones that we will use a little bit later on. So I'm going to make those first so that we can get those cooked and, and ready to eat a little bit later. So I'm going to be doing that right now. And um, you have the recipe there, which is um, the, the way that uh, scones are made in the UK. Um, but it, it, how they were made initially. If you go to the London hotels now, which are very popular for people to go for afternoon tea, um, you can get different kinds of scones just like you can in this country, but that's not the traditional scone. So that's what I'm going to be making now. And that's the one that you have the recipe for. So we're just going to do the butter. And uh, then I just mix in the milk and then I'm going to cook those. Okay, so that's pretty crumbly now, so that's good. So now we can add in the milk. Okay. Now, when I was growing up, um, scones were, um, they, they were certainly part of baking every week, but they were not the most important thing. And so my mother used to make the scones with the pieces that, that she would cut off as she went around pies, and she would then roll those out at the end of her baking. And so it was really just the normal pastry that she used um, so it wasn't specially made it was just the end of her pastry making So is it scone or scone? <laughs> um, well, that depends on who you talk to. Um, where I grew up in the north of England, it was scone. Um, but it, it's one of those things that varies from place to place. <laughs> okay. So now we're ready to roll this out. Thank you. 
Okay, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> And then um, I thought it would be interesting just to sort of talk a little bit about um, teas and how they started in the UK. So um, the tea is um, associated with the Duchess of Bedford, and that seems to be pretty true, whatever you read. So she started teas because they, in the era of um, the industrial development in London, the men were in London until eight or nine o'clock in the evening. So they came home for dinner. They'd already had lunchtime, but it's uh, attributed to the Duchess of Bedford that she wanted a snack during the middle of the day, or at least in the middle of the afternoon. So that was sort of how tea started at three o'clock in the afternoon. Initially, they just ate in, um, in the boudoirs. So they just had things like sandwiches, scones, and biscuits, what we call cookies here. So it was not an elaborate kind of thing. And then um, as the tea became more popular and more widely used, then afternoon tea became a bigger event. So then it was something that um, they invited um, their female friends too. And it became um, a calling card that many women used to invite people to do different um, events. And then it was um, a way of meeting people whose um, families were having some problems. So for instance, um, there used to be, my, my father's family had um, one of his sisters that did nothing but doing the visiting. So they would visit various people in the community that had someone sick. And so afternoon tea became a much bigger event. Um, now, tea actually started much later in, in the, the development of popularity. The first um, thing that occurred for people communicating and getting together was actually coffee. And it was the precursor to tea. Um, the, the big company that is still um, famous in the UK is Twinings that probably a lot of you are familiar with. And they initially had coffee houses. And it wasn't until the 16th century that they developed um, the tea. And they used the same coffee house that they had been serving coffee for many years as the first tea house. And it was, uh, took a little while to develop because they, uh, in that era, they had what we call guilds that were people with the expertise. So people like weavers, li um, livery, um, goldsmiths, those kind of people. And you had to be able to have some particular um, event or job that was Money making, and so those guilds developed where people had their expertise. And then, once he established his expertise, then he was able to buy tea, which initially was from China, um, but it didn't come directly to the UK, it came from the Dutch. They were the first people in Europe to have tea, and so the, the tea actually came from Holland. Um, I think it's interesting to know that um, I always thought that green tea was a separate entity, but green tea is actually the precursor of black tea. So when tea is grown, it actually all starts out as a green tea, and then it's, um, it's picked and it's left to sort of shrivel and dry out a little bit. And that then becomes the orange or the oolong teas. And then when it's uh, put into ovens and dried out even more, that's when the black teas develop. So they, they all originated as green teas. Now, um, at the moment, there's no teas coming to the UK from China. The majority of the teas at the moment come from Kenya. And the, the three biggest 
purchase of uh, teas are Egypt, Pakistan, and the UK. So um, it, it sort of it's it's had a long history and come a long way. But um, the UK is still one of the um, primarily users of of tea. So the, it's a tradition that certainly has hung around for a long period of time. So. Um, and this is Harriet. Oh, you've got Harriet. <laughs> Harriet. Okay. This is okay. And um, initially, um, tea was not accepted for women. It's it's like most of the things that occur in this world that seem to start out with the men only. And so, even though the Duchess of Bedford and some of the women were doing their own sort of teas. Um, the tea drinking that actually took place in London, that was actually the officials, was uh, males only at that point in time. And eventually um, the business got big enough that it started to be taxed on a, on a per gallon basis. Um, and it had to eventually be shipped to the UK, but then it was shipped to different places all over the world. Um, and of course, often, I mean, as we, you all know, it was shipped to Boston at one point and there was the Boston Tea Party. So um, it, it was shipped to different places. Um, and then in um, a certain, it was a, in the 1660s to 70s, the East India Company, which was um, a company that was very involved in commerce and was designated by Queen Elizabeth I, um, they were the company that was instrumental in shipping a lot of this stuff. And because it was so expensive, those ships were um, had to be insured, and that was the development of Lloyd's of London as um, an insurance company. So um, at the moment, you can still see Twining's tea um, it developed um, in the coffee house, but it's still in Temple Bar, and the original store is still there with all the old oak floors, and, and um, there are um, cupboards that go up to the ceiling, and it's a very high building. So that is still there, and um, obviously there's, there's still now lots of different kinds of teas that they sell. Um, I it's interesting that, um, well, I found it interesting that um, the tea plant is actually a cousin of the camellia that we have, that we grow here. It's a distant cousin, but it actually is a distant plant. And now that it's grown in Kenya, it's apparently adjusted quite well, although it is supposedly the best teas are grown very high up at about six to 7,000 feet. And those are the ones that connoisseurs pay the most for. So that in the auctions, um, they, when they auction tea, it's auctioned off by where it was developed, where it was picked. And then it's picked apparently during um, about a six month season. And so there are different, so there's the initial picking and then there's first, second, third, etc., and then the final one during the whole season. And that again is um, a market for the, the most expensive and then they get cheaper as you go down. So um, the people who are connoisseurs uh, that really want to be obtaining the best teas, they obviously have to have the first pickings. <laughs> so um, usually how it is. That's usually how it is, yes. We have a discussion going here as to what the cat's name is. <laughs> Harriet. Harriet. You want to give just a little history of why his, oh, his so name is Harriet? Harriet is, uh, for any of you that watch PBS and you watch All Creatures Great and Small, James Harriet is the vet. Um, he was the vet that I grew up with. He came to our farm. So um, Harriet has a special meaning for me and I, trained as a nurse midwife in Edinburgh, and we used to pass Harriet's school all the time. So Harriet has a lot of meaning for me. <laughs> <laughs> he made his debut yes, in Costa Ruckus. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, 
if we want to just sort of move to um, the tea, I've got sandwiches to begin with. And again, um, I did mine as a fairly traditional tea. So you won't see scones with chocolate and those kinds of things on. So we've got coronation chicken, which um, is not necessarily authentic, but it's the recipe that um, was for Queen Elizabeth II's coronation in 1953. So that is Constance Spry's recipe for that. And then we've got cucumber here and then ham and watercress. So those are, are all sort of traditional ones, except the uh, coronation chicken. Okay, so let me check and see if we're anywhere close to things being cooked. So any other questions? No. Okay, we're not, not quite there yet. It's gone through it's quite there yet. I also saw, oh, um, go ahead. Okay, um, also scones are not, they didn't start out as English. Scones come from Scotland and they come from a small town named Scone. Um, so they were not Period. part of the English tradition. They came from Scotland. Hmm. So that's, that's their claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Okay, so yes. So um, you can talk about our right when cookie. they when they started um, in the the boudoir area of of tea. Then they, it was quite simple. So they only had scones, sandwiches, and cookies. But then later on, when they started having guests come for tea, and it became a much more um, organized system of people having tea parties, then um, it was taken over. So then the servants actually did all of the serving at that stage. So uh, the lady of the house would be um, entertaining people in the drawing room and then they came. So um, I made two things that to me um, were typical. Bakewell tart is, um, is something that is well known. Um, from the Duchess of Devonshire. Um, so that's, that's an old established tart. And then I did um, a cake that is from my mother's recipe, which is a cherry almond cake. And that was uh, something that was handed down to us. So I don't know how old that recipe is, but um, at least it's one of the things that was closer to the time um, the tea started than it is nowadays, where you get much more exotic things. And these special cookies. Yeah. And uh, oh yes, the coronation cookies. <laughs> um, they you got that. Okay. Um, the teas that you get now in um, in lots of places also include trifle, but trifle actually are not afternoon teas. Trifles are actually part of high tea, which is a meal that um, the younger generation started. Um, um, Harriet Gold. Harriet, no. Um, so that they didn't want to wait till eight or nine o'clock for their dinners. So um, the younger generation started having a meal between six and seven o'clock in the evenings when they came um, home from work. And so high tea is different to, to afternoon tea. And that's when you have a savory course and then uh, a middle course of vegetables, salads, those kinds of things, depending on the season um, and a dessert. And that was when trifle was used. So let me see if we're... Anyway, you could probably bring the tart out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I can put the tart out. Okay, so the tart can go out there. And then we'll see what they. Oh. 
Um, so this is a Bakewell chart, and I could cut into that and you could look at that. So, so this is, is a chart that has <clears throat> it's a crust with an almond sort of filling. And then it has some, some icing sugar sprinkled on the top. And then let me see if I can get one of these out, piece out of here. And then you can see it has a little, yeah. So it has a little um, jam on the bottom. So the first layer is jam, which actually didn't come up with this one, but we could get this one, which were better. Cutting now that I can get this. Um, so this one shows more of, of the base. So it has preserves in the bottom and then um, this, this filling lips with the almond. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then um, the cake. So these were served by the servants. So they cut and did all of these things um, whilst the lady of the house was entertaining. So these were made to, to sort of be cut and, and served separately. So let's put one of these. Okay, so this is just um, an almond cake basically with, with cherries throughout it. Okay. 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 Can't see many of the cherries on that side. <laughs> And your tea set is so beautiful, Betty. Okay, so you should be ready for this. Okay, so they, these were cut into, I'm doing triangles because that's the most common way that these were cut. Um, some people in the recipes will say that they should have circular ones cut, but in the era that this these were developed, they didn't have cutters. So they were developed in some, the, the majority of people just cut them into triangles. Okay, so we've got enough there to should be going on with. So these would um, would cool down a little bit. So we'll leave these to cool, and then they have um, clotted cream and preserves put on there. In the meantime, we'll make tea. So we have to. Warm the pot first, which is uh, typical of the, the UK that you warm your pot first. So we we'll warm the pot by just putting hot water in it. Mm -hmm. So just warm it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and then we'll get the, the water fully boiled. So um, this was particularly important when they moved from the first teapots were silver, but then when the era of China developed, um, particularly places like Wedgwood, Minton, um, all the famous ones that developed, um, then a lot of the teapots became China ones. And then they started doing the fancy ones that represented different things. So one would look like a pumpkin or something like that. So there was a, an evolution of teapots. So this is the book. And I just read it here. So we'll add the tea. So, and um, the teapot, the tea cosy is typical of the UK to keep tea warm. We have some cold spots, so we have to keep our tea warm from time to time. So, as that's brewing, um, one of the questions about um, serving tea is do you use the the milk or the cream in first. And that's a, another of the things that's uh, controversial. Some people say um, that you should put it in. And initially it was put in because of the fine china that was used. So it was meant to uh, protect the china from being cracked with the, the hot tea. So initially that was, um, but obviously I, I suspect that tea was used in tankards to begin with because the China evolution was later than the 1600s. So um, the tea is, as I say, um, we put the milk in first or cream, whichever you prefer. Um, in the UK, a lot of the men particularly like um, sugar uh, and, and particularly quite a lot of sugar. Um, that they put in their tea. So, and then um, we keep it warm with, with the tea cozy on. And, um, and that's basically our tea, unless we can, um, I'm not sure that we can manage to put the cream and the, the preserves on the scones. One of the other questions about scones is again, which do you put on the scone first, the cream um, or the preserves? And that varies again as to which part of the country um, that you get your cream from. The clotted cream that is the most famous is from Devonshire and that cream is put on on the top. Now, the other thing that, um, that the British are sort of known for is being estimating uh, just how much cream and preserves you actually put on your plate. Because the way that they're eaten is, is to put the scone onto the plate and then put the preserves and the cream onto the plate. So it's not that it's put onto the scone first, it's put onto the plate. And the story is that most English people know just how much to put on their plate so that they use it all up as they're eating. So the way that the, the correct sort of way to eat is to put the preserves on first and then the cream on the top. And so this is what you're supposed to be able to estimate. And so you you eat just part of it at once. You don't eat the whole thing. And some people actually break off the scone. And usually you don't have to cut them. They're easily broken off into pieces. So um, it's, it's not you, you actually um, cut the scone into, they're actually usually broken pieces off, okay? 
And you just okay. pick up the scone with your hand? Yes. And that's not well, considered improper? It's not considered improper. I put out um, what was it called, tea knives and forks. And so a lot of people will eat their uh, all of their foods, their sandwiches, the scones, and their pies and cakes with a fork. And typically when you set the table for tea, what do you use? Obviously you have your, your tea saucer and cup. Uh -huh. but um, it looks like you have some other really lovely dishes as well. So it's not a full dinner size plate. No, it's no, it's just a tea plate. Right? Tea plate. Yeah. Yes. For, for afternoon tea, it's, it's just a tea plate. The evening tea, because it's much more of a meal, has the bigger plate. And the teacup does not need to be preheated. Correct? No. Right. No. Okay. No, because we put the milk in first, so that helps in terms of the cracking um, potential. And then most of the tea, because people put milk in, is going to be ready to be drunk pretty quickly afterwards because the milk will cool it down or the cream. Okay. And where did these lovely cookies come from you had mentioned earlier? Oh, um, they're from a famous place in Yorkshire called Betty's. Oh. Um, and I, it has nothing to do with me, <laughs> except um, when I was growing up, there, there are several um, stores that are named Betty's. Um, and the one in York was the one that was closest to us. So uh, when I was little, I sort of thought when we went there um, on a day out and we went for lunch, I always thought that when I was little, that it was named after me. <laughs> Um, but then I, I was enlightened and found out that no, it wasn't. It's actually, um, it's about 103 years old now, I think. Yes, it's about 103. So it, it goes back a long way. Um, and it was started by um, a man that came from Switzerland and developed the first Betty's. And it, it now is quite famous. Um, locals now do not go to tea at Betty's because it's always full of people from everywhere in the world, but there's no locals because the line is too long to wait. So tea, uh, I mean, in the middle of the day, now it's hard to get a meal without standing in line for quite a long time. Oh. And does does um, these these cookies were made especially for a coronation? They were coronation ones, so I ordered them, yes. I periodically get things from there. Oh, very nice, very nice. And I don't know if people have questions about um, actual tea. Um, many people have their own um, favorites. Um, I get a lot of mine from Fortune and Mason, which is a, is a famous place in the UK. Um, I still like Twining's um, The Lady Grey, which is one that has a little more fruit in than the Earl Grey. The Queen Anne is one that is very similar in terms of fortune and masons. Um, and then um, nowadays there's a lot more infusions that are not actually tea, but they're, um, and this one is one that's particularly nice. It's elderflower, strawberry and rose. So that one from, from Fort mine is, is actually, I, I like the taste of that one, but mm. it's not a tea, it's just an infusion. Yeah, and there's the famous so, twinings. Right, the twinings, yes. Uh -huh. um, and then the, the others. Um, I don't know if anyone was familiar with the other place that I liked was, it's called T2, and it used to be in Fashion Valley Mall. Um, and it was an Australian company, which is sort of interesting that they would be, but they are quite famous for their teas. Um, and it closed maybe three or four months ago. And I got a recent email to say that you now can order it from Australia. So um, they're back in business, but not in terms of having stores in this country anymore. So mm. now you just have to, to buy it online. And this, this collection here that you have, it's lovely tea plates and cups, is the, have those been in your family for a while? Yes, they're, they're, they're just sort of odd ones now that you could, it, it's not sort of customary now to have everything to match. So now you can 
use any of your old bits and pieces up to, to get um, set up. You don't have to have, as I say, matching ones anymore. No, and they make a lovely table. Yeah. Very nice. So uh, are there questions that people have? Any questions for Lady Betty? No? Okay, so I think with that, we're okay. going to enjoy our scones. We'll have our tea. <laughs> yes. and, our, and our wonderful cookies. Um, I, do, I have heard that there are some English people that actually work at Rady Children's and that actually in the afternoon, um, over the loudspeaker at three o'clock, they announced tea. So I don't know where they go to have the tea, oh, but my. apparently that is true. And um, there's a place called the Frontier Nursing Service in Kentucky, which was started by a midwife that came from the UK many years ago. And uh, she started serving the people in Appalachia. So lots of the midwives went out on horseback. And um, at three o'clock in the afternoon, everything stopped at the Kentucky Frontier Nursing Service. And the tea trolley came out into her office and everybody stopped and had tea except people that were taking care of women in labor but otherwise um you all got to sit down and have tea <laughs> so lovely. there are traditions that are carried on in various places lovely well everyone had a wonderful time thank you betty for the history and i can't wait to uh to dig into these scones here <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone thank you so much Bye-bye. Thank you, Betty and Anne.